हरि ओम लक्ष्य तुंग महाकाल सूर्य कोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देव सर्व कार्य सर्वदा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरु नम नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन ट्वेंटी वन ऑफ द सीरीज गिफ्ट गीता फॉर इनर फ्रीडम एंड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन अ स्टडी of selected verses from the bhagavad gita based on shankara bhashyam we are now in the fifth chapter karma sanyasa yoga in the last session we saw we have a choice over the lifestyle we choose and krishna recommends grahastha ashram over the okra clad sanyasa ashram the vividesha sanyasa because grahastha ashram is less risky being in aida ashram we have to give a inner uh, growth top priority and get jnana yogyata and then jnanam when and how we get to jnana yoga is is a choice that we come to jnana yoga is choiceless jnana yoga is a systematic and consistent study of the vedantic script scriptures for a length of time under the guidance of a competent guru the knowledge of who i am what is the world who is god what is my relationship with god and what is my relationship with the world all this we know from jnana yoga the jnana yogi thus discovers he is actionless atma and in whose presence the body mind complex acts he renounces his actions not externally but through internal re renunciation and therefore the title karma sanyasa yoga i invite dr ravi shankar to introduce this session over to you भ्रूहि starts the beginning of the understanding of the fifth chapter adi shankaracharya summarizes it and says that lord krishna has introduced these two words sanyasa and karma yoga in the third chapter and it is for us to understand what it really means lokesmin dvivida nishta continues as gnana yogena sankhyanam and karma yogena yogina that was the understanding and we had to further understand what it exactly means so in the third chapter the topics of vidvat sanyas vividisha sanyas and karma yoga has already begun so this karma yoga has sapt bhavanas it requires sapt bhavanas and what are they aham karta bhavana kartitva bhavana karma phala sambandha bhavana ishvara arpana bhavana bhog tripta bhavana फल संबंध भावना प्रसाद भावना एंड दी दास भावना दे आर ऑल अ पार्ट ऑफ द कर्म योग बट वी आर सीनियर स्टूडेंट्स तिमोफेगर सर कीप्स टेलिंग अस अगेन एंड अगेन एंड द वेदांतिक टीचिंग इज आई एम अकर्ता एंड आई एम अभोक्ता ब्रह्म ज्ञानम एंड सप्त भावनाज आर डायग्नली ऑपोजिट कर्म योग इज डायग्नली ऑपोजिट टू निधिध्यासनम which is samyak darshanam which is right knowledge but karma yoga and nididhyasana are sadhanas which are required for all of us they are two sadhanas so different and they are two different levels of seekers if you want to know where we stand you must have the mirror of the shastra upadesha not for others to see but for us to our, understand ourselves and we will know where we stand Swami Paramartha Nand Ji has given us these rules to note in this particular chapter. Vidvas Sanyas and Karma Yoga are not two options for one and the same seeker. Vividisha Sanyas and Karma Yoga are two options for the same seeker. 
and vividasha sanyasa and karma yoga is the classical grahastha ashrama to which we all belong or most people belong and shravana manana is the most important part of this ashram but both cannot up simultaneously now we begin with the chapter 5 verse 2 and adi shankaracharya analyzes it and says vividasha sanyasa and karma yoga are both meant for the pursuit of moksha. Nihishreyas karatva vachanam. If we want to do a comparative study, a taratmaya vichara, between sannyasa and karma yoga, it is possible between vividisha sannyasa and karma yoga, but never between vidvat sannyasa and karma yoga. Vividisha sannyasa is inferior to karma yoga. And why is that so? Because it is tough and difficult to practice is a message that we can take. Tima Pekhira sir used to always tell us in uh, the one of the early classes, how do you remember and understand this vividisha sannyasa? They are these vividly dressed sannyasas. We have to become vidvat sannyasa. May I now request Dr. Tima Pekhira sir to explain the seventh verse of chapter five. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Yoga Yukto Vishuddhatma Vijitatma Jitendriya Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma Kurvan Api Na Lipyate. Yoga Yukta. Yoga Yukta means a karma yogi, one who is anchored in. Karma becomes a yoga yukta. There is a nice verse in the second chapter which says, Buddhi yukto jahatiha ube sukrute dushkrute tasmad yogaya yujjasya yogaha karma suk kausalam. What is the skill in action? The skill in action or the pinnacle of karma yoga is seen as yoga yukta. That means once a person is anchored in karma yoga and karma yoga becomes so natural to him how does he do any action there is no sense of i am doing when there is no sense of i am doing there is no punya or papa and when there is no punya or papa you are not bound by actions normally whenever i do any actions the good actions will cause punya a bad actions will cause papa and therefore i am bound by all these actions once a person becomes a karma yogi, then there is no... We'll keep the same slide, uh, Dr. Vishankar. We'll keep the same slide. Yoga Yukto. Now, uh, this is the only slide for me. Uh, although there are many slides. Now, once a person is skilled in karma yoga, then kuruvan apina lipyate. That means he may do karma, but that karma is not going to bind him. You will see the same word comes many times. Vishuddhatma, Vijitatma. So the Atma here has different meanings in different concepts. What is Vishuddhatma? Now, when you do karma, there is a certain purification of the mind. That is what is called Vishuddhatma. The Atma here in the second word means mind. My mind normally has got certain impurities. What are the impurities my mind has? Kama, Krodha, uh, uh, Kama, Krodha, Loba, all, all those six impurities and Raga and Dvesha. Because of Raga, Dvesha, Kama, Krodha, Adi, uh, my mind is impure and therefore not eligible for Jnana Yoga. Therefore, Karma Yoga gives me Vishuddhatma. It purifies my mind. And then what happens? There is another sadhana that we need to do that is called, uh, the word here is Vijitatma. Vijitatma and Jitendriya. Jitendriya is how I win over my sense organs and Vijitatma is how I become the master of my body. You will see the same word Atma in this word Vijitatma means victory over my body. Vishuddhatma means victory over my mind. Now the Atma has got different meanings in different uh, in the in the different words. The interpretation of Vijita uh, Vijitatma is through Ashtanga Yoga, through Ashtanga Yoga, uh, through Shama and Dhamma. Uh, 
Dhamma is Jitendriya. Shama is uh, controlling of my mind. So Vishuddhat. So we have understood the first line. The first line is full of sadhanas. What are the sadhanas there? Karma yoga is there. Upasana yoga there. Is there? Ashtanga yoga is there. And uh, Upasana yoga. Karma yoga, Upasana yoga, Ashtanga yoga. Now, all these give me Jnana Yogyata. Once I get Jnana Yogyata, I become eligible for spiritual knowledge or Jnanam. When I get spiritual knowledge, then I realize what? That I'm not this body, but body plus consciousness. I understand I am Bhutatma. The second word in the second line. So Bhutatma. I realize the word Bhutatma means within this body, within this uh, body of mine, there is this Atma. I am not, I am a body with consciousness. But once Jnana Yoga comes in, I realize Sarva Bhutatma, Bhutatma. The Atma within me is the same as the Atma within everyone. And such a person now who becomes a Jnani, Kurvan Apina Lipyati. So a Jnani has no sense of I. So therefore, when you do actions, you are not bound. Next one, please. Now I have to repeat the same thing in each of these slides. Next one. If you go by word by word, Vijitatma Jitendriya, having mastered my body and sense organs. Vishuddhatma, my mind becomes pure. Yoga Yukta means through Karma Yoga. Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma. That means the Atma within me is the same as the Atma within all. Once a person through all these sadhanas who gets jnanam, even though he is acting, kuruvan api na lipyate, he is not affected. Next one, please. I'll quickly read the same thing. So this is the literal meaning. So you will see how one word of the Bhagavad, one verse of the Bhagavad Gita can summarize all the sadhanas and all the benefits. Having mastered my body, mind and sense organs, the karma yogi, realizes that he is the Atma. This is possible only through Jnana Yoga, which is the self of all beings. And as Atma, he observes that the body-mind is acting as per its ashrama, as per its, uh, 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 you know, Varna. Varna and ashrama decide what my body does. And therefore, he is not affected because there is no sense of doership. Next one, please. So, Repetition, yoga yukta means karma yoga. When I am anchored in, a karma yogi is a winner in whatever he does. He is not doing it for, uh, he is selfless in his actions. You remember what is karma yoga? Ishwar Arpana Baba, Ishwara Prasada Baba. I am not doing for, uh, uh, you know, for my own success. There is more of sattvic actions than rajasic actions. Next one, please. That is what is yoga yukta. Vishuddhatma, there is a sense of vairagya, a sense of dispassion happens. My mind is purified of karma krodha and asuri sampat is replaced by daivi sampat. Next one, please. Vijitatma jitendriya. Here the atma means body. So the same atma can have different meanings in different contexts. How do we know it? You will know it through Shankara Bhashyam itself. And he will give us a right interpretation how to understand all this. Uh, through Ashtanga Yoga, through Shama Adi Shakta Sampati, I become Jitendriya. Having mastered my body and sense organs, I attain to what is Sadhana Chatustaya Sampanna. I get Jnana Yogyata. Next slide, please. Once a person has Jnana Yogyata, then you get jnanam. Then you realize I am not just this body, but I am body plus atma. And then the next jump comes that I am not only this body, uh, atma in this body, I am that one atma in everybody. The one formless consciousness pervades everybody. Next one, please. This is the meaning of sarva bhutatma bhutatma. I am not body with consciousness. In fact, I am that consciousness which is uh, uh, with this incidental body. And the consciousness in the me is the same as consciousness in everybody. There is a nice verse in Manisha Panchakam. Ya Brahmadi Pipili Kanta Tanushu Prota Jagat Sakshini. Next one, please. So Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma here is Jivatma Paramatma Aikya. 
This happens only through spiritual knowledge. Through Guru and Shastras, I understand that the Bhutatma is, is Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma. Next one, please. So after this disidentification with the body, coming through Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga, because there is no sense of doership, he is not tainted by these actions because actions belong to the body. And because the person does not have any ego or ahankara, our whole spiritual exercise is to weaken our ego or ahankara. He then gains an ability to objectivize body as part of the creation. This objectivity leads to an acceptance that whatever happens to the body is as per the uh, law of karma. Next one, please. Therefore, I am not affected. Kurvan apina lipyate. Such a person, such a karma yogi, buddhi yukta or a jnana yogi is therefore not affected by whatever he does because he has moved from the triangular format to the binary format. Next one, please. So, this one particular verse can be our life school. Yoga yukta. Through karma yoga, Vishuddhatma, my mind becomes purified. Vijitatma jitendriya, I become a master of my mind and sense organs. I get jnana yogyata and I understand sarva bhutatma bhutatma. The atma in me is the atma in everybody. In fact, there is only atma and bodies are only incidental. For such a person, you may be busy doing whatever. Kuruva napi na lipyati. Shri Guru Bhyodhana. Thank you, sir, for such a clear and understanding and uh, giving it in such simple words. So, this verses uh, 7, 8 and 9 is taking us to Jnana Yoga and Jnana Yoga, which also continues in the 13th words onwards. And this journey of the spiritual seeker is clearly understood even in this verse, which is Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, Jnana Yoga, culminating as Vidvat Sanyasa. May I now request Srimati Nita Poddar to explain the 8th and the ninth verse of chapter 5. Hari Om, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Um, the fourth part of the verse Dr. Hegre just explained is commented and elaborated in um, the shlokas 8 and 9. Kurun api na lipyate. Although engaged in work, the wise one never identifies with the action. Here Krishna is giving instruction to the Vidvit Sanyasa, the one who is confident to enter Nididhyasnam. Nididhyasnam brings about two significant changes, mindset changes. I am not the body, mind, ahankara. This body, mind is an instrument. I am the all-pervading consciousness behind this body and everybody. And the second change is I am not a sadhaka seeking Jeevan Mukti. I am Nitya Muktaha. Next slide. Coming to the verses. Naiva kinchit karomiti yukto manyeta tatvavet. Krishna is advising the jnani, the yukta, to practice that he is not the doer. Tatvavet means the one who knows, who has tatva jnanam. The Paramartha Darshi, the one who is ready for Nadidhyasnam, the Vidvit Sanyasa, Manyeta, um, means he should practice this new bhavna. What is this new attitude of bhavna he should practice? Aham kinchit na karomi. I don't do anything. Although I engage in actions, I disclaim the doership of any action. I am not the ahankara, karta bhokta. I dissociate from the Ankara and I claim myself as Atma. I do Deha Abhimana Tyaga and Karma Abhimana Tyaga. I am in the world and yet untouched by it. Na Dharma, Na Chartho, Na Kamo, Na Moksha, Chidananda Rupa, Shivoham, Shivoham. I am Nitya Muktaha, free from Sanchita, Agami, and Prarabdha Karma. We practice this mindset. Na Eva. Pinchit Karomi, I don't do anything while going through all kinds of activities in Vyavahara. And this is what is going to be said in the second line of the eighth shloka and the ninth shloka. Next slide. Uh, and the next, sorry, I missed this. Uh, 
पश्यन श्रृंगन स्पृशन जिग्रन अश्न गच्छन स्वपन स्वशन प्रलपन विसृजन गृहन उन्मिशन निमिशन नी इंद्रियाथेशु वर्तंत धारयन That Pepperwood, who knows his true nature, claims his higher nature while all the worldly transactions are going on, like a tambura shruti in the background. Krishna pretty much mentions all the actions possible in these two shlokas. Next uh, slide. First, he mentions um, all the transactions that happen through the organ of knowledge: pashyan, sh seeing, shrinvans, hearing, spishan, touching, jigran, smelling, ashnan, tasting. Then he mentions all the actions that happen through the organs of action, the karma indriyas, pralapan, seeing, shrinvan, sh wearing, sprishan, touching, jigran, smelling, ashna, sorry, um, grinan, um, which uh, pralapan means talking, then um, grinan, which means holding the object, it represents the hands, then the gachan, which uh, represents the feet, the represents excretion and evacuation, um, both the uh, the payu and the upastha. Swashan. Swashan represents all the, um, the action that happened because of the pancha pranas. Um, while becoming aware of his breathing, this takravit um, remembers, I am not the one who is breathing. I am the one that enlivens the breath. And then Krishna, Krishna, Shri Krishna cites Swapan. Swapan means usually dreaming, but here it cannot mean deep sleep or dream state because we cannot practice Nididhyasnam in those states. Therefore, Swapna means resting or reclining in this shloka when neither Nyanindriya or the Karmelias are taking place, or the Avara is taking place. And the last two words, Unmission and Nimission. Unmission means while opening the eyelid and remission means closing the eyelid, implying that every moment I must entertain the thought, I am not the doer. Remember, Nididhyasnam and these activities are taking place together in the waking state. Next slide. And then Krishna clears up in the last line, um, how are these actions taking place then if I am not the doer? Indriyani Indriyarteshu Vartanta Uti Dharyan. Krishna says, uh, in, Indriyani means sense objects, Indriyarteshu means sense objects. Why, whatever activities that are taking place are because of interaction between the sense organs and the sense objects. Vartante means engaged. Dharyan means bears in mind. This yukta cognizes. All the actions that are taking place are in the field of anatma. Indriyani, Indriya, Artheshu, Vartante. Aham kinchit karomi, I am atma. I am that atma. Next slide. The two side notes which we need to um, acknowledge is the Nidhitsyasana that is being recommended by Krishna, Sri Krishna in this verse is called Brahma Abhyasa. It takes place while we are doing our regular Dhyavahara. The second uh, is the Samadhi Abhyasa Rupa Nidhidhyasnam, which will be described in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And how long will we continue with this Nidhidhyasnam? The, um, that will vary from individual to individual. No guru can say that. The seeker will take stock of his own Till the deliberate practice of Nididhyasana brings about transformation and this knowledge becomes natural and spontaneous. Hari Om. Many thanks, uh, Srimati Nita, for a nice chanting and a very clear explanation of these two verses. Naiva kinchit karomi yukto manyeta tattvavit. We must clearly understand and reinforce again that Nididhyasanam is Vidvat Sanyas, which is binary format. And in binary format, I am Atma. I am not Ahankara. I don't have Prarabdha. I do not do any action. In all the three periods of time, I am an Akarta. And Tasmat, Abhokta Iti Manyeta. And that's why I am also an Abhokta. In the 
Brahmabhyasa Rupa Nididhyasanam, as you very nicely brought out. Timo uh, Fegrisar always keeps telling us about this uh, particular verse from Yoga Vasishtha. Tat chintanam, tat kathanam, anyonam, tat prabodhanam, etadye paratvam cha brahma pyasam vidur buddhaha. And that is the understanding that the real I is my swarupam. This particular two verses highlights that the transition from ahankara to atma. So we are moving from the adhyaropa moksha to apavadha moksha. That is what is the explanation given. And it's a very wonderful thing to understand that we are looking beyond Jivan Mukta and Videha Mukta to being Nitya Mukta here and now. So we move from the triangular format to the binary format. And Adi Shankaracharya says there is a clear change in the mindset. I am not a Jiva trapped in the world waiting to be rescued by the Lord because I am Brahman. I am not a Sadhaka looking for Jivan Mukta and Videhi Mukta as a goal because I am Nitya Mukta as my very true nature right now. May I now request Dr. Vikram Kekatpure to explain the 10th and the 11th verse of chapter 5. Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Shri Krishna says there is a choice regarding ashrama, sannyasa or grihastha ashrama, also called pravritti or nivrutri mark. He advises for most seeker, Grihastha Marg is the safer option. Now, in these verses, essence of Karma Yoga is being discussed from verse 10 to 12. The topics of difference between Karmi and Karma Yogi, Sadhana and attitude which is required for Karma Yoga, benefit of Karma Yoga and finally, limitations of Karma Yoga are being discussed. Next slide please. Let's look at the verse 10. Brahmanadhyaya karmani sangam tyaktva karoti yaha lipyatena sapapena padma patram ivambhasa Shri Krishna says, Arjuna, if you are not ready for jnanam, keep following karma yoga. Perform all actions as service to God. Give up the doership and attachment. Shankaracharya elaborates that a karmi and karma yogi operates in triangular format of jiva, jagat and ishvara. He is the jiva. Jiva is different from ishvara. He is karta and bhokta and therefore there is anxiety and fear about the result and future and therefore he requires support of ishvara. As, as karma yogi surrenders to saguna ishvara, the results of his actions do not change but the impact of its results are reduced and avoids wild reactions such as anger and despair. Thus, results affect karmi, but karma yogi remains unaffected. This is explained beautifully with a uh, lotus leaf an analogy. Next slide, please. In Bhashyam, Shankaracharya beautifully explains Brahmani Ishwari Adaya Nikshipya, that is, Jiva should dedicate all karmas to Ishwar as service to the Lord. This is called as Jiva Bhava. The next question is, how should one dedicate Tadartham Karma Karoti? Very important statement. All action should be done as if doing puja or worship. Any karma, whether it is Nitya, Naimitya, Nishiddha, Kamya or Prayashita are done as worship. The proportion of Nishiddha should become zero. Kamya and Prayashit should be reduced. Karma Yogi focuses on Nitya and Naimittik Karma. Then the next question is, what should be the attitude? Swami Artha Sarvani, just as employee works for the pleasure of employer. Similarly, Karma Yogi performs all actions to please the Lord and gives his best. Next question is, what to expect out of this action? Sangam Tyaktva, drop all the material expectation of result. Shankaracharya goes a step further. Moksha Pi, that is, even at this stage, don't think about the final goal of Moksha or Chitta Shuddhi, but dedicate all efforts resolutely without expectation to the service of law. Then what is the expected result? Tha Papena Lipyati. Pap here means negative impact. Since there is no desire of a result 
the negative circumstances only transiently affects him. The mental reactions are mild. Karma Yogi dedicates negative circumstances as will of God. Both Sri Krishna and Shankaracharya uses analogy of lotus leaf and exalts uh, Karma Yogi, that lotus leaf example, that although there is contact with water, leaf does not get disturbed or damaged by water. Shankaracharya further clarifies about this verse. Kevalam Sattva Shuddhi Matra. Karma Yoga leads to spiritual progress. Chitta Shuddhi and Jnana Yogyata is achieved. But as long as the triangular format exists, the progress to Jnanam and Moksha will not happen. For which there has to be a switch to binary format of Nitya Anitya Viveka. Next slide please. Let's look at the verse 11. Kayana mansa buddhya ya kevala indriya rapi yogi naha karma kurvanti sangam tyakta ma shuddhai. Essence of this shloka is that when a, per a person performs various duty, kai, like going to office, puja, temple visit, pradakshana, etc., watching, that is nama, japa, bhajan, manasa, dhyana, or parayana, with intellect or buddhi, Vedanta vichara or composition and using the karmendriyas, nyanendriya or karmendriya, without identification and with complete detachment, that leads to chitta shuddhi or jnana yogyata. Next slide, please. In Bhashyam uh, by Shankaracharya on this work, there are three important points mentioned. Kevalaihi mamatva Varjita, Vache, Kai, Manasa, Upasna are not are done merrily without doership or mamakara. Similarly, for Indriya, Mamatva Buddhi Shunni, action done by sense organ with zero sense of doership, but with the attitude of Ishwaraya Karma Karoti, Namam Palaya. Every action is done as a service to Lord, not for any personal gain. Next slide, please. When yogi does nihit karma with the sense of detachment, chitta shuddhi is guaranteed outcome. Therefore, Shankaracharya advises that in the beginning stage, don't worry about any result, whether moksha or chitta shuddhi, but focus 100% on at the job of a job at hand. It is there is important clarification here that any sadhana with detachment done in triangular format is a karma yoga. Even Vedanta Shravanam in, is karma yoga and lead, results in Chitta Shuddhi. It will not lead to Jnanam or Moksha. That is the limitation of karma yoga. For spiritual progress, yogi has to achieve Jnana Yogyata and then move from the triangular to binary format of Nitya Nitya Viveka, practice Jnana Yoga, Shravanam Mananam Nididhyasam for the progress along the spiritual path. Next slide, please. So to summarize, there is a spiritual progress in Karma Yoga and therefore it is superior to Karma alone. In Karma Yoga, action is done as a service to God without sense of doership. There is a complete detachment from result or phala. The result is Chitta Shuddhi or Jnana Yogyata. For further progress, there is need for shift from triangular to binary format. Ariyo. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vikram, for a very nice uh, presentation. Uh, it is clear that uh, the FIR is less for a Karma Yogi and the FIR is definitely much lesser for a Nididhyasu, as explained in this verse. The 10th, 11th and 12th verses highlight the Karma Yoga aspects. And when we talk about Karma Yoga, we always continue to have this feeling of being a Dasa. But Dasoham plus Vedanta, if I continue all my life and then I die, Bhagwan will give me liberation at the time of death or later is a thought that comes to a lot of people's minds. But Swami Paramarthanandaji clearly says that Dasoham to Soham Bhavna 
is essential for liberation here and now. The triangular format lifestyle has only one phalam and that is Sattva Shuddhi, which is Atma Shuddhi or it is Chitta Shuddhi only. While Karma gives material progress, Karma Yoga can give spiritual progress and Karma Yoga is not sufficient for Jnanam. It is essential to remove the Ahamkara and the Mamakara Vritti. Remember, we must reject the clasp. So while we perform all the five karmanis, the Vedanta Shravana remains the same. It is like turning the knob is an example given by our Swamiji. And he says, for an anadhikari, it is yoga, but for an adhikari who, uh, who has sadhana chatushtaya sampanna and who is jnana yogyata, it is jnana yoga. Now let's understand a little bit about this particular words and phrases. Sarva karma sannyasa is a vidvat sannyas who is a jnana karma sannyas and that is nididhyasana. And therefore the definition of nididhyasanam is a shift of triangular format to binary format. Jivan mukta and videha mukta have no relevance for, because it's only from the standpoint of ahankara and they belong to the triangular format. Shravana mananam gives, gives us jnana prapti the practice of binary format gives us jnana nishtha. While in Nididhyasana, we have this habitual format of triangular format bringing us back, even though we try to practice binary format, jnana nishtha is binary format being our natural mode. And therefore, while in jnana nishtha, the viparita bhavana of the triangular formats have been removed. May I now request Srimati Mamta Shankar to explain this very important 13th verse of chapter 5. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, chanting the verse Sarva Karmani Manasa Sanyasya Ste Sukham Vashi Navadvare Pure Dehi Naiva Kurvanna Karayan. The literal meaning of the verse is Renouncing all actions through knowledge, the self-contained person comfortably remains in the city of nine gates without doing any action and without instigating anyone. In the next slide, the 13th verse of the 5th chapter talks about Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga or self-knowledge is the central theme of the 5th chapter. Lord Krishna has discussed the practice of Jnana Yoga in detail in the 4th chapter, 34th verse, that is Tadviddhi, Pranipatena and so on, that is Jnana Yoga is a systematic and consistent study of Vedantic scriptures for a length of time under the guidance of a competent guru. Vedantic scriptures is that which dwells with the knowledge of who am I, who is God, relationship between I and the world, reason for our creation, and what should be our ultimate goal. In the next slide, seeker practicing Jnana Yoga is called Jnani or Jnana Yogi or a wise man. Such a Jnani discovers a very important fact. That is, I am not the body, I am not the mind, but I am the pure consciousness or consciousness principle or the Atma, which is our real or true nature, who is functioning or transacting through the medium of the body and mind. When the body-mind sense complex dies or dissolves, I, the consciousness, continue to exist. Since the medium that is body and mind no longer exist, all the transactions that is happening through the body-mind stops. In the next slide, and I, the consciousness, is akarta and abhokta by nature. To understand the nature of consciousness better, Swamiji draws an, an analogy with the example of light and hand, which Sir also has discussed many a times in our sessions. The hand is visible due to light present, but all the hand movements belong to the hand alone. The light does not move from one place to another as it is all pervading. Similarly, the Jnani identifying as I, the 
consciousness principle is aware that in their presence, that is the presence of I, which is all pervading consciousness, the body and mind acts. I, the consciousness, is neither a doer, that is akarta, nor one who reaps the results of the actions, that is abhokta. In the next slide, so Agnani does sarva karmani manasa sannyasya in the mantra. That means sarva karmani sannyasya means Gnani renounces all actions, be it physical, verbal, mental, not actually giving up actions, but through manasa, that is through wisdom or the knowledge of I am the self or the pure consciousness. And I am not the body-mind, I pervade the body-mind. That means Gnani who has discovered I am pure consciousness and not body and mind is detached from the body and mind. There is an attitudinal shift. That is when we say I am doing some action, for Agnani, it implies in the presence of I, the consciousness principle, the body-mind is involved in action. In fact, the body-mind cannot avoid action while being in the world. But I, anchored in consciousness, is Akarta and Abhokta. So it is more of internal renunciation through detachment or disidentification with body-mind and not external or physical renunciation. Nani who is anchored in I, the consciousness, or the Atma is aware that I am the immortal or eternal Atma. Body-mind comes and goes. In other words, it is mortal, but I am ever eternal. In the next slide, with the assimilation of this knowledge, Vashi Sukham Aste. Vashi means the Gnani. Gnani remains Sukham Aste. That is at peace or is comfortable and dwells in the physical body. That is Pure in the mantra, which is full of activity and consisting of Navadvare, the nine gateways. Physical body is pictorially represented as Navadvare Pure. That is a city of nine gateways. Nine gateways are the sense organs and organs of actions by which we interact with the world. Nani, residing comfortably in the physical body, being very much aware that I am the consciousness principle or the Atma, that is Akarta and Abhokta, and also aware that in the presence of consciousness or that consciousness as witness is Na Eva Purvan Nakarayan. Looking further into it, the body-mind is performing actions directly, that is Kurvan, or indirectly, or in, an, or in an instigating manner, that is Karayan. But I, the pure consciousness, is not doing anything at all, totally unaffected by what is happening to the body and mind. That is the meaning of Na Eva Kurvan Na Karayan. In the next slide, or the last slide, as I conclude, the essence of the verse can be aptly summarized with a quote from Swami Vivekananda. One who runs away from the samsara, spends time in the caves of the Himalayas to meditate, has missed the way. One who plunges headlong into the vanities of life in the samsara, also has missed the way. The right attitude is, divinize the life itself. Thank you, sir. Hari Om. Thank you very much for a nice explanation. To reinforce, the central theme of the fifth chapter is again highlighted as Jnana Yoga in the 13th verse. And that is Vidvat Sanyas or Inner Renunciation, which can coexist in our Grihastha Ashrama. Vidvat Sanyas is internal re renunciation and that can coexist with Grihastha Ashrama, which means the goal of all seekers is Vidvat Sanyas. And Grihastha Ashrama and the Sanyas Ashrama, whatever be the Dharma, Chitta Shuddhi is essential. That happens with the practice of Shravanam and Mananam. Having attained Jnanam, the convergence of Vidvat Sanyas is Nididhyasana. Swami Paramarthanandaji has very interestingly brought out this 
phrase neighborization. Look at the ahankara as your neighbor. Don't look at it as yourself. You disidentify it from yourself. Neither do I perform the karmas nor do I instigate the ahankara to do anything. He says that from a worldly angle, I reside in this physical body as the Sakshi Chaitanya, but I know that the world resides in me. And therefore, true renunciation is inner renunciation, which is Vitvat Sanyasa. And the highlight is Sarva Karmani Manasa Sanyasa. It is not a physical uh, sanyas, but it is a mental sanyas, which comes not by reading and understanding, but it is through knowledge. So we should further clearly understand that the sense of prasanna chitta or the sukham aste, the happiness, is through the renunciation of the pancha anatma abhimana, the profession, the positions, the body-mind complex and the family. It might be relatively easier to be away from the sthula sharira abhimana, but it is extremely difficult to have, be away and to disidentify from the sukshma sharira abhama, abhimana, which is responsible for punar janma and punar janma bhayam. And therefore, the anvaya of this verse is very important. Vashi dehe sarva karmani manasa sanyasya na eva kurvan na karayan navadware pure sukham aste. May I now request Dr. Manjula Devi to kindly explain the 14th verse of the 5th chapter. Thank you, sir. Shri Guru Shloka 5.14 Nakatratvam na karmani Loka srujati prabhu Na karma phala sam yoga Swabhavastu pravartate Here in this shloka, prabhu means the atma, the self. Na kartratvam not an agency, not a doer. Na karmani, no activities. Sujati, created. Lokasya, for people. Na karma phala samyoga. There is no connection between action as well as the results. Swabhava, one's own uh, nature. Pravartate, is prevailed. The meaning of the shloka is, the atma has got no doership, nor is involved in the activities of a people. Neither there is a connection between the actions as well as the results. But it's one's own nature that prevails. Next slide, sir. So we said that Prabhu here is the Atma. In the previous shloka, we learned that Atma is the king of the kingdom, which is the body, which is sealed by the city wall of the skin and therefore is prevented from the attack of the external world. Navadvara Puram is the nine entrances or exit gates that is prevailed in the body. The entrance gates are the eyes, ears and nose. The exit gates are the organs of excretion. And the mouth has got two gateways where the speech being from the inner and eating that is the entrance gate as well. These nine gates are involved in being attacked to the external world and Jivatma blesses the body and the body is alive and active because of the Jivatma. Next question. Next slide, sir. The question that comes in one's mind is that is Atma residing inside the body, the kingdom, actually the Karta? We have heard from Shruti that Atma is said to behind, be behind in all actions. So the Syasrota, the year of the year, Manaso Manaha, the mind of the mind, Chashukshaha Chashuksha, the eye of the eye. The answer to this is no, because Atma does not perform action either directly or does it instigate something else to do through indirect action. Atma is neither Nakarta na Bhokta, because the shloka also has said that Karmani na Sujati, Atma does not create any action, Karmani na Karoti, Atma performs no action. Atma is considered as a light and this illumines the action but not involved in action and remains as Sakshi Bhava, the witness principle. Since light illumines, it does not get good result of good action nor bad result of any bad action. Atma neither creates any action, karmani na sujati, nor performs any action, karmani na karoti, either directly or indirectly. So it is neither na karya, na karta, na karita. If we have good thinking and if we do good action and if we have bad thinking, we end up doing bad action. 
Therefore, goodness and badness belongs to the lower eye and not higher eye. Next slide, sir. Atma also is said not to create karma phala samyoga because it does not unite any action because it's not a doer, not the results of action. So it is neither does not do any karma phala samyoga. If Atma doesn't do, then who does it? It is the Swabhavastu Pravartate. It is one's own nature that engages it with itself. Nita Madam very clearly said that the sense organ engages themselves in the sense object. The faculty of the mind thinks, whereas the intellect is a deciding factor. The elixir blesses all the electrical gadgets in a similar way. The innate feature of the radio is for a sound and the innate feature of a fan is to rotate. Similarly, the light is same for all of them and is not responsible for any saintliness of a saint nor any criminal action of a crime. Dani has realized this, whereas uh, Agnani has identified himself with the body-mind complex. Next slide. So let us understand the philosophy of creation. Here, Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha is unmanifested, the passive, without any attributes beyond the time and space or beyond the cause and effect and is a formless one. Whereas the Prakriti or the Maya is a manifested, the creative force of any action and attributes with attributes and is the source of form. The union of this is called Mahad, that is the cosmic intellect. From this arises the Ahankara, the ego, the sense of I-ness. The features of Maya, that is the Prakriti, are inherent in its elements too. Features of cause inherits the effect too. Karane, Gunaha, Kare, Anivartate. Therefore, the three features in universe is attributed to the three gunas. Jnana Shakti, which is the knowing faculty. So it senses, it knows, it experiences the world. That's why it's called Sattva Guna. Kriya Shakti is a dynamism or capacity to be active that is manifested as Rajaguna. Now, Dravya Shakti, which is a part of Tamas, is actually an inert one, which means that there's neither the, there's no uh, knowing faculty nor an acting faculty. So all these three gunas are inherent in Maya, Trigunatmika Maya. From Sattva, as you see in this picture, is the five sense faculties, the Jnana Indriyas, and five motor activities, the Karma Indriyas, and the mind, which is got into the uh, capacity of thinking. From Tamas, we have uh, Tan Mantras, which is the subtle forms are the sound, touch, sight, taste, and smell, and the grosser part of it becomes the ether, air, fire, water, earth. When the subtle elements become grossified, that is the five gross elements, are responsible for the physical body. That is of the physical body. Then what about the antakarana, the inner being? The inner being involves four faculty, the ahankara, the ego identifies the self, the atman, with the body as I. The other parts are the buddhi, which involves in the control of decision making, the manas, the mind, which controls with will or resolution, and chitta, memory, which deals with remembering and forgetting. Next slide. If you look into this particular site, there is a body-mind complex and there's interaction of antakarna with the external world. The five organs of knowledge send their sense data to the mind. The mind integrates this sense data and uh, sends this signals uh, to the intellect by analyzing it. The intellect sends solutions and decisions to the mind back again, and the mind sends the instructions to the karmendriyas, which are the five organs of action. The ego, identified with the action, creates the I sense by playing its role on both the pancha indriyas, that's the gnani indriyas, and the karmendriyas. The memory has an interplay between the intellect and the mind and can store and retrieve thoughts and other things. So the three gunas that are manifested, that is the sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic, are in different combinations. And these are the ones that binds to the world. Having understood this, it is very important for us to eliminate the tamas guna, refine the rajas guna, and establish the sattvic guna. Next slide, sir. So to conclude, akarta, atma is akarta. So this jnana yoga is very important because that is when we know what is the anatma viveka. So the lack of discrimination makes one thing that I am the doer. And this discrimination of knowledge of Atma is covered only by ignorance. Knowledge does not light up the self. The self itself is a light. Knowledge, therefore, destroys the ignorance and reveals the nature of the self. Thank you very much for a very nice and uh, elaborate explanation of these words. Uh, to reinforce and highlight uh, a couple of points, 
we have now understood that atma alone does every anatma alone does everything but not alone it is in the presence of the atma but atma does not generate doership and it does not generate karma so the purva pakshi asks this question kaha pravartate who is functioning kurvan karyancha doing and instigating and the answer that bhagavad pada shankaracharya says is swabhavah pravartate this swabhava has been explained by swami paramartha nand ji as maya this maya is the apara prakriti or the lower nature that we would see in chapter 7 and swarupam is my swarupam which is the para prakriti maya is apara prakriti and we have to give it the importance of vyavaharika satyam however we need the same maya as the greatest blessing because without maya we will not be able to understand and claim our paramarthika brahman nature so only at the realms of the mithya maya all the vyavahara takes place however i know that i am a vyavaharyam nidhi dhyasanam being the important part of discussion in this chapter till now is meant for the viparita bhavana nivritti elimination of the viparita bhavana which is result of misconceptions born out of agnana and this viparita bhavana is very powerful and what part of it is powerful aham karta aham bhokta this viparita bhavana has been explained to be of three types of bhayan the papa bhayam naraka bhayam and the punar janma bhayam and swami paramarthananda ji says regulator for our disciplined life is bhayam when there is bhaya there is a regulation for to have a disciplined life but over a period of time with nididhyasanam the bhayam disappears and shraddha comes in it is when shraddha comes in that gnanam becomes easier shri guru bhyo namaha A lot has been touched upon in these shlokas. All the sadhanas, karma yoga, pasna yoga, for nyana yoga, ta, all the its limitations and the importance of uh, moving on to nyana yoga. Then how to come to get to nana nishta, uh, move from basoham to soham, triangular format to binary format. In fact, um, Doctor uh, Manjula also touched upon creation to understand ahankara. gratitude gratitude to our gurus and the guru parampara thank you so much dr ravi shankar and all the speakers of the day dr hegde dr shrimati mamta ji dr vikram and dr manjula devi for the detailed sharings we meet again on um, for katha upanishad session 22 uh, on friday the 5th of april um sorry session 23 पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 ही हरि ही ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ही ओम